Good afternoon, Scott Redler, Chief Strategic Officer at T3Live.com. Welcome to today's recap, good to be back. Just uh, took a trip out to the West Coast to the Trader Expo. That's why I wasn't here on uh, Thursday and Friday. I hope the VTF help, helped you navigate the markets. Tried to tweet a little bit here and there, you know, and I actually didn't do a lot, you know, from being away, but um, it's actually good to see that you could hold some positions using technicals and make money and let the market work for you. And, you know, today we have our 45th, I think, record close of the year or something like that. That was a stat that I was on Fox Business at 3 o'clock, which I'm on every Monday if you want to tune into Fox Business or tape it, but you don't really have to. It's only like two minutes. But um, it's just a little disappointing because, you know, look how beautiful Vegas is. Hold on. <laughs> beautiful, right? Well, that's actually, I think, the Grand Canyon. And I actually I want to go for a run there, but I couldn't uh, coordinate the early Saturday morning to do so because the night before was a little later than expected. But anyway, with, with the market at all-time highs, you know, it just, it's unbelievable how little interest there is, how the, the Trader Expo is probably the lightest I've ever seen it. I've been going to that Trader Expo for 10 years, and the last five or six years I've been actually presenting for Schwab you know, to their active trader audience, and they didn't even go back. And so I don't know what that means. You know, I think the, with the age of social media, you can get a lot of content out of Twitter, the age of the webinars where you could... I could do a whole presentation like I do from time to time on the Red Dog Reversal or Chart Pattern Analysis or Trend Analysis, and you have a thousand people tune in and get an hour's worth of education instead of traveling. But um, it's just, it's definitely, um, it's not, actually, it's a little disappointing. I, I wish there was more people involved in the market. I wish there was more people learning how to navigate these trends. And I wish there was more of the public in it because you know, I talk about time frame analysis, and eh, you could be a baby boomer at age. You know, like my dad at age 69 and, and invested your first dollar before the 1987 crash, stayed the course, you know, S&P mutual fund, just say yes, keep it simple, every month and did awesome. You could have uh, been someone in their 30s and put your first dollar in before 9-11 and stayed the course. You could have been like my wife who, you know, graduated, you know, she's a, a neuropsychologist and started putting monthly flows in in 2004, three years before the crisis hit financial crisis and just kept doing it, kept working, stayed the course. She's got a great average cost, is very happy. So people who did the long-term approach could be very happy if you didn't get scared out. And unfortunately, the media tries to scare everyone out of the market. You know, if you trade for alpha, you trade for P&L, kind of like we do here, uh, or for a living, you have to watch, you know, dis different trends. You have to keep an eye on things a little bit closer. And recently, we've talked about the 8 and 21-day moving average, which is what I always talk about saying if sectors and stocks are above there, you try and be long them. If they happen to break it or close below it, maybe you get out, get neutral. If it stays below it and the action warrants it, maybe you get short. Now, if you look here at the spiders, has the spiders or the S&P been below the 8 and 21 day moving average over the last three to four weeks? No. In fact, every time it's got extended from it, it's played some catch up or it's digested, and then you've had uh, another nice trade above it. So entering this week, we try and figure out what could change this market, what could change the speed. And as of right now, you have this gap up in the spiders to trade against. Well, you know, talked about it this morning. You had an inside day in the spiders. Okay, but what happened in the queues? Technology, look at that. Almost at Friday's high. So that's a healthy sign showing some strength. Still above the eight day. Has the technology sector been below the eight day? No. Then the Russell, which, you know, it's been a little bit choppier. Uh, did it fall apart? You know, you had your, your red drug reversal right here. Gave you a quick tactical trade. I think some of us took it in here. Didn't look for the follow through. Looked as if you had a, a red dog or not red dog, uh, head and shoulders pattern right there. You had a break of the neckline, but it quickly got reclaimed. So once it's got reclaimed, that said, uh-uh, no more downside. You know, look to cover. Some people got long and then you could have sold some strength or, or not, you know. And uh, here we are holding the eight day again. And now if um, the Russell were to break above this little pivot area, you know, if you're, if you're short it, you, gotta, you have to be careful. There's been guys short the Russell probably since like here <laughs> that broke through and just decided to continue to roll it up. So anyway, you know, you have a level here. It's holding up well. It's above the 8-day. It's been a little choppier, but it did hold the 21-day. And strong sectors do hold the 21-day, even laggard sectors. So this still looks more of a, you know, more tactical, but, but surely not a short every tick like some out there say. As far as stocks, there are some stocks that are just, you know, not waiting around. And I, I feel like I've missed the last three points in Apple, but I'll live. Um, 
But you know, you look at Apple, okay? You look at this trend and you look at if you were an investor, how much money you could have made holding Apple. And as a trader, we were not enamored with Apple most of last year. As soon as the iPhone, as soon as this, you know, that 7 for 1 stock split, and I said iPhone to head, I think it hits 100, you know, you could have watched it versus ProGap, seen a nice consolidation commitment, wrote it again here, the 8 and the 21 day, stayed with it, and then, you know, and then there were just lots of different tactical plays, descending channel here, break to the upside. Here you, you had this engulfing bar, could have got you out, and then you could have waited again. And then, you know, you had this tight range, and then the second call I made with, with Apple was, you know, I think it hits 113, 115 after the earnings. So I wasn't expecting this quarter to be good, and this quarter was good, and their, uh, their next quarter projections or guidance was good, and it gapped up and became another nice trade. Okay, the same time people were talking about it, it was rotten, it was this, it was that. Technically, it held the gap and went. Anyway, this was your last, like, tier two type of setup, and now it's just trending, and, um, you know, you could have trimmed and trailed, but I would say at this point, don't be short. I think I saw a lot of people out there on Friday saying, oh, Apple's the first to go red, just short it. And you know what? It's in a freaking strong trend, and if you're going to be short, you better be real cute and have levels to cover. So anyway, Apple's still trending. So if you, if you own it still, congratulations. If you're trading it, there's been a lot to do. The last time really was that 109.75 for a meaty type trade. Now, you know, you just have to make some cash flow or just stick with it. Another um, trade that this is the one that I did focus on when I left, okay, and um, you know, still funny people out there, you know, talking and just uh, whatever they are. Um, anyway, this was, you know, the Bob of the Butt call that it can go to 120, it went to 120. <laughs> uh, I didn't think it would happen so quickly and it did, who cares? Okay, this is when it hit the IPO high here, gave you another nice setup, and then you did get this reversal, okay, so you could have taken that signal to be short, your first real short signal. Okay, or, or maybe that was, maybe you, you trailed it the whole way because this was fast and furious and it never closed below a prior low until here, so that probably was your stop anyway. And then, you know, it traded below a level and you had a little short there, okay? Then before leaving, I put a chart in and I circled this. I circled 107, saying, you know, below 110, maybe it hits 107 fast and you could buy it for a pull-in. And I also went long it like, a, like someone who's not out trading for a living. I got in there. On, on Wednesday and stayed in there on Thursday, made a few trades from Vegas and, um, you know, and worked out well. One was an option trade and then the other was stock and even today I, I bought a little back and it closed well and we'll see, you know, if it opens up tomorrow. But all in all, you know, a targeted buyable pulling at the 21 day. And now the 21 day is your next guide and we'll see, you know, how long that guide stays intact. I thought maybe it would sit tight for another session or so, but it, you know, it actually closed real strong, so we'll see what happens tomorrow. But either way, lots of nice technical moves here. Learn how to trade them. Another stock from the VTF that people were looking at that also was strong was Cyber. Look at that chart. Okay, this was different. This had a big gap up after earnings. Okay, had some follow through, held in there, got tight, let the eight day catch up, and gave you a nice tactical trade. You don't have to be long this the last few days. You could have waited till today and made a nice move. Or you could have got long on this day, traded versus the gap, and, and it went. Or, you know, you had a trend here. A little bit different than something like Loco. Okay, Loco did not work. Loco had a nice tight pattern, you know, under, under consolidation, looking as if if it delivered on its earnings, it could have cleared 38 and went. You know what? It didn't clear 38. The earnings weren't great. It's got a high valuation, traded below the 8 and 21 day. You get out and you wait. Now it's at the lower end of the range and it's a nothing. A little different. Two potential winning trades. One went longer and acted better, and there you go. Another one um, that's on the radar is this VA. VA gave you a really nice, you know, remember the art of the first day, gave you a great trade, gave you a day two, even gave you a day three. And now this one's in the game to learn how it trades. Okay, it, it, it held higher. You know, I wouldn't be chasing it now, but you know, you had this viable pullback in the middle of the range, show some commitment, and there you go. Um, you know, stock today that I tried that I lost money with is Google. Google um, it's a laggard. The reason why I'm so tight with it is because it's below all the moving averages. It doesn't follow my criteria to sit in it because it's not acting well. I thought maybe it would clear this descending channel here and play a little catch up as a laggard. Didn't work. You know, maybe I'll try it again if it actually clears it and shows some power, but it's below everything. It doesn't really deserve your attention or your capital unless it changes. Changes like Amazon. Amazon changed. Amazon, you know, we, we talked about it after the, the post earnings low. Okay, gave you a, 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 move, a quick A move off of it, which you could have missed. And then when it put in a higher low right here and gave you a red dog reversal, that was your clue that you know, now it's time to at least look at it for better action. And then 
the th it cleared its 308 downtrend, and now it's, you know, it's pretty much cleared this above the 200-day, so perhaps it gets going a little bit more as this counter trend trade continues. It's a laggard. It's now above all the moving averages, so it is different. But it, it had to prove itself during this, and it happened fast and furious and was pretty compelling. And, you know, in the note we talked about it as a potential fourth quarter play, and it's actually acting really well. And maybe there's another trade above this 338 soon. I'd like, I was hoping it would rest a, a few more days because I had it on this day and sold it. Um, you know, but uh, it's going to be hard to buy it back, I guess. You know, Baidu, um, yeah, it's getting sloppy up here. It's still fine, but not much cooking there. You know, so as traders, you want, we want to look at for tight setups. Setup side could give us a one to three day trade, you know, that, that feels like it's a little risk averse. So today towards the end of the day, I was like, you know, what looks tight, what maybe could go in the next few sessions. And people on the VTF were like, why don't you look at Citigroup? And um, I did buy Citigroup closer to the close because it was the first, head that, first stock that poked its head above this range. It's above the eight day, above the 21 day, fits my criteria. So it's acting stronger. And um, who knows, maybe it gets going back to these highs. Also, you know, Morgan Stanley, you know, it's not as strong, but it's, uh, you know, give you another inside day. It's above the 8th day. I'm trying to anticipate it. And when you try and anticipate a trade, you're only in small. I'm only in a feeler of both those. If Morgan were to trade above, um, what is that, 3590-ish tomorrow or 36 with some force and the banks really show some power, then I get into you know, a tier one and a half or a tier two, and then we'll see how it handles this spot right there. But all in all, you know, the banks have been lethargic, not the best to trade, but they're worth a look. Bank of America, eh, you know, it's been a laggard. Um, this was a great trade for us last year, and this year it's just, you know, been, you had to really pick and choose your spots very carefully. Still below the March low. This is uh, the 1750, was, there was some call activity in the 1750, so maybe people are anticipating another move. It did hold the 50 days, so it's, it's decent. So at this stage of the rally, you want to look at things that are kind of tight and decent, and, and, and at least you, know, you have risk parameters. You don't want to be going after things that are up 20 days in a row, that are super extended, that are an accident waiting to happen. And you don't want to just go after counter trend laggards because you're looking for something to do because they're kind of counter trend laggards for a reason. Um, the metals, speaking of counter trend laggards, um, we, had, we caught a nice trade with this um, you know, wedge type pattern that resolved to the upside. You saw a little commitment in here, and now you're seeing a little commitment again. So I'm not back in the metals, but I'm watching it. Some people are asking me just for the levels. So as long as just say, you know, I think I wrote in my morning note, as long as it stays above 114.50, kind of stay with it and then see what's next. SLV also closed flat today. Um, we caught a nice trade when it ignited here. You know, it didn't quite give you the follow through like gold, but still hanging in there. Maybe at some point it does clear this and gets to that gap fill, which we mentioned back on this day, you know, that could get you 16 and a quarter. So with all that said, I'm sorry they got to run. I just wanted to put it in perspective. Every week we try and figure out what's the speed, what's the composure, what's upper support. Until an upper support level gets breached with some kind of authority to the downside, keep doing what you're doing. Look for the nice setups. Take one to three day trades. And if you're looking for a tactical short, make sure you do it versus a high so you don't just roll it up for multiple weeks like some of those guys all in out there do. You know, you don't need to be all in anything. You could be trading, you could be using your tier system. And when you get that nice setup and things are in your favor, then, you know, you go bigger and then you trim and trail. And hopefully you don't trim and trail yourself out of great positions as they continue a lot higher, which a lot of them have done. But it is what it is. It's Monday. Tomorrow is an, another full day. We have a holiday shortened week. I'll get into more tomorrow. Look forward to my note. And I'll uh, see you with uh, Brittany in the morning call. Have a good night.